the evil the mother of slashed men. To death. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. A trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor men. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. <gasps> We'll make it through this game of murder alive. Clock Tower. Hello everyone. This is a no damage all survivors ending A playthrough of Clock Tower on the PS1. Technically, Clock Tower 2 in Japan. Yeah, sorry, the ending. Or er, opening. Plays twice. Ish. Opening menu. What are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. So, clock tower in itself. Not a uh, difficult game in the slightest. Especially if you already know where you're going and what you're doing. While we're playing as Professor Barton, we have to examine the scissors on the desk and check the, uh, the, 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 I don't even know what the fuck that is called in, like, the doctor's office, where they sit the patient down. Examin examination table, maybe? But basically, it's just all about doing the right things in the right order, this game. And uh, essentially that is what I aim to show in this video. We examine the statue, and then we talk to Beth twice. Then we check Scissorman's mask on the table. Talk to Danny twice. And then we check Harris's desk. 
and then we will be allowed to leave the room. So over here is the first major decision that you can make. You have to talk to Harris twice and get him to ask about Jennifer in order to change the playable character to Jennifer. Basically, there's two major decisions that will happen that will influence the course of the playthrough as you go along. The first of which is, which character are you going to play throughout the majority of the game? Is it going to be Jennifer, or is it going to be Helen? And the second is, where you are going to send the statue? Are you going to send the statue to the library, or to Rick the butler? So interesting tidbit, this game is actually uh, compatible with the PS1 mouse. I don't actually use the PS1 mouse because I had no success going into the menus. But you can use the PS1 mouse with this game. So we got to talk to Harris while I accidentally examine the statue here.
And uh, in this playthrough, I chose to send the statue to Rick. But basically, where you choose to send the statue to has a bearing on whether or not you will finish the story. If you send the statue one place and then you go the other, then you basically get one of the bad endings. But I just chose to send it to Rick because it was the quickest, safest thing. Quickest, easiest thing. But basically, you know, in a no damage run or in a speed run of this game, you're only going to encounter Scissor Man like once in every scenario. And you're just going to get rid of him, just directly go for all the key items and leave. I think that a more interesting run might be something like... Trying to trigger every Scissor Man jump scare that is possible. But I don't know. Probably not going to go quite that far. But I think some of the jump scares that you can trigger are entirely RNG. Yeah, to that end, I think any future things that I do in this, after I upload a Helen, a no-save Helen, no-damage run, I might just do, like, segmented if I wanted to cover any of the other endings and just, like, put them all into one video per character. But it's like the average playthrough of Clock Tower, once you know what you're doing, will generally last about an hour. So in order to get through this intermission quickly, we go to the hotel, and then we go to the uh, university research building to talk to Helen.
Then we go back to the university staff housing to talk to Nolan. Dude, he's like in his 30s and she's 15. That's fucking gross. What's wrong? Help! Someone is following me! Hmm, some kind of weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> so in order to get rid of Scissor Man here, we're just going to open this door and hide in a box. If you double tap, sometimes Jennifer will run, sometimes she just won't. I haven't really found a way to get Jennifer to consistently run, but that's okay. We got the oil can. We need the oil can for the uh for the castle later so that we can rescue Helen then we're going to go into this uh security quarters on the right hand side here we're like just not going to examine the guard Headless guard over here. But basically we got everything we need in order to progress. We can just go directly to the top, use the key, get out. But basically, you just have to constantly be clicking in order for Jennifer to keep moving. Which is kind of annoying. I think in the original Clock Tower, Clock Tower 1, on the Super Famicom, you were able to just, like, hold the left button, or, like, the, the, the L button or the R trigger, like, the L trigger or the R trigger, and you were just able to run. And, like, not have to worry about... Like, not have to worry about, like, constantly clicking everywhere.
once we get to the uh, main map, there was actually no need for me to go to the newspaper. I got a little ahead of myself. I believe you're supposed to go to the newspaper last. But the first place you're actually supposed to click is the University Research Building to talk to Helen, who will make mention of the statue. So because we sent the statue over here and we asked Nolan 
to go get it, we get to continue with the game upon completing this scenario. Nolan, I was given this chandelier as a farewell present when I retired. So it used to hang in the Barrow's mansion? Yes, what wonderful times they were, except for... Once we were able to regain control, we just go through the door here. Oh, by the way, a little known fun fact. In the uh, Japanese version of the game, there's completely different voice acting. Somehow, between the localizations of the games, they lost the master files for the voices. And uh, Rick the butler was actually, was actually voiced by uh, Barry Gerda, who was the voice actor for Barry. In Resident Evil. But we're just gonna go into the guest bedroom here, hide into the closet. Scissor Man is just fucking dumb. <laughs> we just have to go and examine the closet twice. And then we can pick up the statue. So there is the statue. And uh, before we go back downstairs, I decided to trigger precisely one. Very, very silly Scissorman encounter, just because I thought it was funny. All you have to do is just re-enter this room, or like enter this room twice. And then Scissorman is just sitting in the rocking chair watching Tom and Jerry. So we're going to run back into the guest bedroom, and then we're going to use the blanket to escape Scissor Man this time, because if we run directly down the stairs and use one of the other hiding spots... Oh, I actually made a mistake here. I was supposed to toss the blanket. But... Scissor Man's fucking dumb. <laughs> I hid in the same place twice.
And Scissor Man still didn't catch me. But if we go out this door while Scissor Man is still chasing us, then Nolan will trip down the stairs and we will have to initiate a uh, QTE mash sequence for Nolan to get back up. Of which I'm not really sure if it causes uh, stamina loss to Nolan or not. So we go into the laundry room here and we get the powder soap. This could be used to blind someone. Or commit animal cruelty, one or the other. Now we're going to go into the kitchen here. We have to go into the kitchen here so that we can get the location of the Barrow's Mansion. Whenever we check the mask, though, the mask is uh, going to just start floating, being generally evil. So we got to grab this vase on the table and toss it at the mask in order to break it. Otherwise, we get clobbered by a chair or a picture frame. Then we're going to equip the powder soap, and we're going to throw it in Beethoven's face. <laughs> the fuck out of here, Beethoven! Fuck you! First things first, we talk to Nolan, then we go to the hotel to talk to Kay, and then we go to the university research building, and the police station, and then back to the newspaper.
any day now past Carsey is going to notice that the uh, pointer is not clicking anything. I'm glad he finally noticed, though.
Don't be afraid, Jennifer. It's me, Harris. Harris? Poor girl. Don't worry. I'll help you now. Where are we? Where is everyone? What's that costume? He told me. He told me that if I kidnap you, he will give you to me. He told me to dress up like Scissor Man and kill people. Jennifer! No, no, don't come any closer. So, Jennifer's Scenario 3 is very, uh, is very, very, uh, specific in the order of rooms that you have to go through in order to rescue people. You have to first start by pushing the clothes rack over Scissor Man, and then examining the priest's robes. Then you have to go to the room to the right here. But you have to examine the priest's robes first. Otherwise, Inspector Gots will die whenever you go to the room where you meet him. You have to check the uh, lower shelf that the ladder is resting on in order to get the door spell. We have to get that translated by either Helen or Professor Barton. Once we get in here, we're going to examine this. Now, once we grab this, we have to take very special note of which one it is. It'll either be a moon, a sun, or a star. The sun has a face on it, the star does not. So pay very close attention because you cannot look at that again. By picking up the stair key, Inspector Gotts is alive. Jennifer, you're still alive. Inspector Gotts! Thank heaven, you're all right. It's Assistant Inspector. Inspector Gotts? I'll go and look for the others. It's Assistant Inspector. Anyway, be careful. But yeah, Helen's uh, scenario is completely different, especially her scenario three, because in her scenario, Professor Barton is the bad guy instead of Harris. Rather, I should say, Professor Barton is the fake scissor man instead of Harris. Moving on, quickest thing here is to go into this room here and then examine the 
nightstand over here to trigger this rat. And then we have to click on this three times in order to be able to check the mouse hole. which is, of course, requisite for the library key. Next, we're going to go through this door. We'll go through the third door down. And this wooden door will lead us into the kitchen. I'm pretty sure the way that this works is every time we, uh, every time we rescue someone new, Scissorman's encounter timer completely resets. But I could be wrong about that. First we have to check the canned foods. Well, actually we just gotta check the hatch on the floor here. And then we check the shelf here. Twice. I think if we didn't get the library key, then Beth would be dead. Or if we did things in a different order, then Beth would be dead. But we have to examine the wine bottles first, before we examine the ladder again. <gasps> Beth! Oh, Jennifer! It's you! Are you hurt? No. I'm all right. He's going to kill us anyway. I don't want to go any further. You have to talk to Beth again in order to get the key. We can't get upstairs anymore. Why would we want to go upstairs? Because... We might be able to find a way out of here. There probably isn't a way out. But if you really want to go, take this key. I found it a little while ago. I don't know what it opens, but it'll probably open something in this mansion. So next we're headed back into the hallway, and then we're going to go to the right, or the left, I don't know, decide past Carsey, decide. No pressure or nothing. I think there is a chance that Scissorman could pop out here, but... I think it gets reset whenever you come in here and grab the cop the copper book from the bed. Don't examine anything else in the room.
the severed scissorman hand will choke you out and cause damage. It's you, Jennifer. Professor Barton? Professor Barton, are you all right? I'm not injured. This is an extremely important experience for me. Because here I am at the site of the murders. A very, very intriguing situation. Hmm. Oh, Professor Barton, I found something I would like you to look at. What does this say? Hmm. It is in Latin. Words to open the door. Below that is written Nha e sh. What does it mean? I don't know. It means to open a door, just as it says. But it doesn't say which door. A door? We use the key that we got from Beth to open the gate, and then we use the oil can that we got all the way back in scenario one in order to open up the door. <gasps> There's a rope on the ground, and also a candle. We're going to equip the rope. Unfortunately, whenever Jennifer goes to rescue Helen, try to open the door here with the box key. These bats are always going to come in and cause a little bit of damage. So when going for the best ending and try to rescue characters, you actually can't put the rope on until after those bats come in. So there's nothing you can do about that. Helen, are you all right? Oh, Jennifer. <sighs> Are you all right? Yes, but my head hurts a little. Is there a way out of here? I don't know. But I do know one thing. If we don't kill Scissorman, he'll kill us whether we get out of here or not. Jennifer, there must be a way to destroy him in this mansion, and I must find it. After we exhaust that dialogue, we can proceed upstairs. Once we get out to the balcony over here, we have to examine the door for Scissorman to drop down, and then we just examine this ledge over here and 
Jennifer will shimmy across. Once we do that, Scissorman can't get to us anyway, even though we can very clearly see Scissorman's shears clipping through Jennifer. Jennifer! Nolan! You're alive! Where is everyone? I don't know. Scissorman attacked us, and everyone scattered. Ah, oh. Nolan, you've hurt your leg. Just a cut. I'll be all right if I rest. <laughs> Nolan, I'll go. By yourself? I'll come back after I've found and killed him. You saw them too? I've seen them a few times already. They are probably the ghosts of the children killed here. So many! So as I mentioned earlier, you have to pay attention to what uh, symbol you got on the plate. And uh, even though it says star plate, whenever you pick it up, it says star plate for all of them. So even though it says star plate, it could be the sun or it could be the moon. But you're still not going to see it. Once we come into the library over here. We're going to uh, check on top of the shelf and then we're going to drag the foot stand. And then we're going to take the old lambskin parchment, which we need to get before we go to Tim. Otherwise Tim will die because again, for some reason, you have to have prerequisite items before you visit a room where somebody is. Reasons unknown. Anyway, we're going to examine the shelf. There's a missing book. And then we're going to examine the scratches on the floor so that we, for some reason, now know that we have to use the book on the shelf in order to move it. Even though it should be obvious, just based on the fact that there is a big old gap in the shelf, that that's kind of where the book goes. I don't got any other items matching that description. So there, looking for the star. There's the star, right there in the center. If we choose the wrong one, Jennifer gets squashed. It's uh, randomized per playthrough, by the way. But we need to go this way in order to go into the uh, door over here and get the dagger. Upon getting the dagger, pretty sure we gotta click the door to get out of there. I don't know if Jennifer escapes automatically. I just know that we can't go back into that door unless we want to die. But next, we have to go to find Tim. And we have to examine the, uh, the genealogy 
We'll examine the picture that we saw in the genealogy. We gotta look for Quentin Barrows, who is going to tell us that we have to look in that fireplace that we passed through multiple times. Even though it's pretty obvious there was a melted candlestick, and we have a candle. So once we come in through here with the genealogy, we can rescue Tim. Hey. Tim! Looks like we're in a bit of a jam, doesn't it? I think you should keep these matches. Matches? Maybe you'll need a light. Thank you, Tim. What are you going to do now, Tim? I'll rest a little more, then try to find a way out. I'm not too sure I'll find one, though. Right, we've talked to Tim, we got the matches. Somehow, miraculously, we still have not encountered Scissor Man yet. We gotta examine the third picture from the right in order to read the note. So we put the candle in the holder, we light the candle, but not before we examine the fireplace first, so that we know to put the candle in the holder and light the candle. And uh, that mansion map enables us to go down to the final area and beat Scissor Man. At this point, we have rescued every character that there is to be rescued. So now we just got to go back to where Professor Barton was. We got to examine this tree directly above the uh, gray hatch on the right over here. All you need to know about the final encounter with Scissor Man is use the statue on the pedestal, then use the dagger, and that's the end of the game. Edward, please! I know you're a good boy! Let's stop this and go back to the Granite Orphanage! Edward!
So, it was you, Edward. <laughs> I guess the secret is finally out, Jennifer. But my name isn't Edward, it's Dan. <gasps> you don't mean... No! So, you remember me now. Jennifer! No! Come here, you scissor-fingered little runt. Just try it! I wonder how many days have passed since we were locked in here. Days? I think it's been only a night. Are we going to die like this? Don't worry. I'm sure Helen will rescue us. You know, you're tough. <laughs> no, you're just weak. Please department third floor! Please department third floor! Helen? Jennifer! Nolan! Helen! Why don't you have a seat over there, Nolan? Anyway. So yeah, that's uh, Jennifer ending A. All survivors, no damage. If you enjoyed this, please check out my YouTube channel. Got a lot of other no damage runs of a lot of other games. Also check out my Twitch, which is uh, where I record all of these. Twitch.tv slash SDA. This was recorded in front of a live studio audience. And if you wish to support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on Patreon. My Patreon is just a glorified tip jar, so that's up to you. As far as uh, future plans for this game, I plan to do the same run with Helen at some point. Probably might take me like an afternoon to do it. And uh, maybe try to record some of the other endings, but you know. I kind of want to move on to other things. I was actually in the middle of an Ocarina of Time No Damage run that I would like to finish. Thank you guys for watching and see you all next video. all of you who have uh, been waiting for about the past like month or two for me to record another new damage run. Thanks for waiting. Appreciate it. We'll be back in there.